uh, Kira, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, I suppose it is f better late than never that particularly Germany commit to sending these tanks. Uh, d do you have any understanding of, of why they were taking so long to agree to this move? Hello, thank you so much for having me. Well, of course, we are all thrilled that the decision has finally been made and that we will receive tanks and we will try to make everything possible and impossible from our side. So we will train our soldiers faster and that logistically tanks will arrive to Ukraine faster. However, of course, it is upsetting that these decisions still take long. We hope that the turning point in supplying weapons for Ukraine was before the New Year's, when President Biden agreed to send us Patriot missiles. We know that Germany was hesitant because they did not want to be the only one country uh, supplying tanks to Ukraine. However, these arguments have been uh, quickly ruled out when United Kingdom, United States, Poland agreed to do that. In fact, we never have heard like uh, decent explanations from Germany, like why, why hesitations? Mm. Uh, and I think as of right now, with the information from intelligences from all over the world, knowing that Russia will be on the offense very soon, uh, it should not be a matter of question to give us weapons or not. Even right now, a year into this war, we are still in this David versus Goliath situation where Russia has more people, more weapons, more military production, more supplies. So we have to be um, different. We have to fight harder. We have to have more sophisticated weapons and we have to, ha to use different strategies. Mm -hmm. And having tanks is one of those strategies. Um, so uh, honestly, we, ha we are really happy that tanks would arrive. But why they did not arrive earlier from Germany, that would remain a big question mark. It is a big question mark and a big concern, particularly because Germany wasn't just not sending its own tanks. It was refusing to allow Poland to send those Leopard 2 tanks as well. Are, are you worried that there might be a, a, a bit of a, a, a division in the Western alliance? Sort of, you've got, you've got America in the United Kingdom that are very steadfastly uh, supporting Ukraine. Also, countries like those Baltic states and indeed Poland, those uh, Eastern European countries, very strong in support of, of Ukraine. Do you worry that Germany and France are, are lagging in that support? Um, you see, Putin was very clear a couple of times that he plans to drag the war for a long time and that he uh, hopes that the Western alliance would not hold still till this time, that it will be really, uh, really hard and at some point the alliance will break. So, of course, we are worried that he may succeed, but again, it's in our power in all democratic countries' power to make him fail. Because uh, what nobody is talking about is uh, what would happen if Ukraine fails? Well, we don't want to think about that. We will be standing for as long as it takes. However, what would happen if we don't get the supplies? What will happen if, if the West will show its weakness against Putin? It's not only Ukraine, Russia and uh, uh, the Western countries are watching. It's China watching, it's India watching, it's uh, South American countries watching, Africa is watching, looking for a single small sign of weakness to, uh, uh, for all the rest dictators in the world to raise their heads and say, yeah, well, probably we can do uh, something um, against the UN charter as well. And so what, what would you do, Western countries? So I think uh, this understanding that it's much more than Ukraine at stake is something that we need to continue telling our German friends, our French friends, and continue pushing for this unified front. This is the only way to move forward.